It's what says French chairs more than a hotel room in America. We're talking about a good time. We're chasing every moment of the good nights. We're always looking out and it's a good life. We go around the world for a show. Oh, oh, oh. And it's a good time. We're chasing every moment of the good nights. We're always looking out and it's a good life. No, we are never letting this go. Oh, oh, oh. Hey guys, I'm in a hotel room in America. I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana which is a little town right at the top of the United States, near the lakes, just sort of southeast-ish of Chicago, but it's called the Midwest, and I'm having issues with this at the moment because it's not the mid and it's not really the west, it's sort of the north mid thing. I don't know, anyway, that's where I am. And the husband is off doing business meetings and exciting things like that, and I'm sitting here waiting for him to come back. So I thought I would start answering some of your questions. And we're gonna start with French airs because what says French airs more than a hotel room in America? But hey, let me run through some of these questions because I know a lot of you are about to head over to France in your motorhomes, in your camper vans, and you've got lots of questions you've been emailing with and shooting them through on Facebook. So if you have got any other questions, keep sending them through and at some point I'll get around to answering them all for you. So let's start, French airs. Let's start with the basics. What even is an air? In France, the word air just literally means area, and there are lots of different types of airs. Not all of them mean motorhome or camper van parking. The ones that you are looking for are an air disservice, or sometimes they are just called an air. And you'll generally have a motorhome sign that looks like a motorhome over a waste disposal point. That always means there's a waste disposal point there, but they sometimes also use that sign to show motorhome parking spots. Or there might just be like a black outline of a motorhome just to show if there's no facilities or anything like that there. So an air can be all sorts of things. On the motorways or the main toll roads or bigger roads, you get these air to service, which are like uh, service stations in the UK on the motorways. So that's where you have your fuel, you get toilets, occasionally you'll get showers, you generally have a cafe of some sort. There's normally a shop where you can buy bread and cheese and drinks and things. Occasionally there'll be a restaurant and they often have designated parking areas for motorhomes and vans and caravans as well and that's where the lorries are. You can stay overnight on most of them there's normally a sign saying how many hours you're allowed to stay for but you're going to get people coming in and out all night you're going to get lorries and their brakes going all night it's not going to be the most restful relaxing stop. Having said that if you're knackered and you need a few hours sleep those are quite useful. So they uh, I can't speak those are air to service on the motorway. Also, in between them on the bigger roads, and to be fair, on some of the smaller roads, well, you'll get something called an air de repo. Please excuse my French pronunciation. R E P O S. And those are generally indicated by like a picnic bench and a tree, that sign that shows that there's like a little seating area. And it's basically a lay by off the main road where you can stay. Sometimes there'll be a sign saying how long you can stay for, but normally there's not. And we've seen lots of people staying overnight in these. Um, there's no facilities at all, very, very rarely. Occasionally there might be a toilet or port a -loo. If you're really desperate, it might be better than nothing, but ideally use your own. Um, but those are, they're, they're kind of like every 20K. They're really quite common, especially on the bigger roads. And you can just pull in if there's space and it's first come first served and you can stay there. But again, you're right by a road. You'll have people coming and going on night. Lorries use it all the time for their rest stops. So it's not our preferred option, but we have used it every now and then when we've done really long journeys and we've just driven as far as we can before we needed a nap. The main air de service, and yes, it's the exact same term as the ones that you get on the motorway, but the main air de service that you're interested in are the ones that are off the main roads and that are near sort of the little towns and villages. And these are approved overnight parking spaces for motorhomes, camper vans, converted cars, um, pretty much any vehicle you can sleep in, apart from a caravan, I'm sorry, most places don't accept caravans. And they also don't always allow vans with like signage, you know, if you have a stealth camper so you can camp in cities and stuff and people don't know you're in there. A lot of the airs won't allow those and we have seen people being asked to move on. But an air can be one of several things. It's normally just a big gravel car park that the local council have put aside for motorhomes or camper vans, I'm gonna use the terms interchangeably. Um, and 
it's literally a first come first serve basis and you pull up if there's space you can park there might be facilities there might be electric you would have to pay for that separately there might be waste disposal there might be way uh, water disposal uh, there might be uh, somewhere that you can get fresh water and drinking water and sometimes they're free a lot of times they're free actually or like a couple of euros um, sometimes there's slightly more and those tend to be the ones where you can stay for several nights I think three nights 72 hours is the maximum we've seen and you can also um, have electric and other facilities and sometimes they even have like a separate area so you have a marked bay that you park in and then you have a little bit next where so you're allowed to put out like outdoor seating and outdoor chairs and all these things because normally you're not so we'll get to that so you either have a big gravel area and you just park up wherever you want or you have proper marked out lines and that tend to be how the ones that are in the big cities or the big tourist um, destinations are and those are really quite tightly packed together and they're also really short our motorhome is 7.8 meters it was 7.8 meters um, but with a trailer on we were nearly nine and a half and we couldn't get into most of the airs that we saw near Lake Annecy for example we couldn't get to them we were far too long um where else have we been Bordeaux we struggled like near the city um Nice we struggled and Menton because that is just crazy in fact fair they don't really have airs right down on the south of France they really um like you'd stay in campsites and they try not to have people flitting around all over the place but there are lots of options most of the way around France for longer vans. We have never not been able to find somewhere. Occasionally, like down near Menton, we had to pay to stay in a campsite, whereas ideally we wanted to stay in an air. But having said that, it turned out that we took our motorbikes anyway and we tend to stay in a campsite when we take our bikes out. So that kind of worked out, but it wasn't our first choice. So that's where they are. And they're literally, they're run by the local council. If you pay, you either pay it like a pay machine, like a car park, so you need change. A lot of them don't accept cards, so you have to have actual coins. Or you have to go to a, wherever the local place is, and it will be on a sign in the parking area that tells you where you have to go and what you have to pay and things. So it could be um, a local bar we've had to pay in, a cafe, the local shop, uh, I think tourist information sometimes does it, so you have to find out. And they're normally within walking distance, you know, five, ten minute walking distance. It's not like it's millions of miles away. And you literally rock up there and you say you've got a motorhome in the parking area and they'll say, OK, how long are you staying for if you're allowed to stay for longer than 24 hours? And you pay your money and that's it. It's really quite straightforward. Occasionally they are slightly more advanced and they have uh, tokens and things for the electric points. And so you can pay for a token and put that in rather than paying coins in. Or um, sometimes you can just plug into the electric and then when you go there you say you want electric and they add it onto the bill and you've got unlimited usage I guess. So there are lots of different ways that it all works but the signage is actually quite good. Most of the times they'll have it in French and English. Sometimes it's always in French but they've got like pictures that show you what you've got to do. It's, it is quite straightforward. Make sure you follow the signs because we have been places where people haven't paid or haven't got and got their ticket within sort of half an hour of, of turning up and someone from the local community have come over and, and you know sort of frog marched them to the pay station to make sure that they buy their ticket um, so it does depend where you are but we make that our first priority to always go and sort out what we have to do and make sure we've gone and done that one thing to be aware of is everything shuts in France between sort of midday and two half two if you happen to turn up between those times you'll find that the tourist information the shop uh, possibly not the cafe or the restaurant that was where you got to pay but a lot of the times where you need to pay could be shut so just sort of make a mental note to go and talk to them when they reopen again and if you turn up after about seven o'clock when everything is shut for the night you need to go and do it the next morning common sense stuff okay so how does an air work what do you do it's it's an approved place to stay for the night, but it is not a campsite. So unless it specifically gives you an area to put out your awning and it sort of says that um, outdoor seating and barbecues and things are allowed and other people are doing that as well, assume that you can't. Assume it is literally just like a car park. So uh, don't get out your outdoor stuff. There's 
two schools of thought on whether it's okay to level the vans or not. Most airs that we've stayed in, you haven't needed to level them because they've just been a flat car park. Um, so we haven't needed to use it. In Germany, funnily enough, we did, and we used our hydraulic legs on our van and leveled up. Nobody said anything, but yeah, we were always told not to use leveling ramps and things in airs because it's frowned upon. And I guess it depends where you are and, and what they're like. Worst case scenario is they'll tell you to move it and put it back as it was. It's not a big deal. They're not gonna kick you out for leveling your van, but most of the times you shouldn't need to. Um, basic standard courtesy rules apply don't leave lots of litter don't play loud music um don't be noisy don't let your dogs off the lead running around causing a problem dogs are welcome pretty much everywhere in france if there's a cafe or a restaurant you can generally bring your dog um and there's no problem whatsoever with having them on an air or tying them up outside as long as they don't go and, and bother other people um we left our vans there and, and got off on motorbikes on some of them. Um, so there's no problem at all in, in living from your van. It's just having a lot of outside stuff that tends to be a problem with some of the local councils and all the rules are created by the local council. So try and abide by them and everything you need will be on the signs that's in the, uh, in the car park. So how do you find an air? I have done a big long video on this, but it was a while ago, I'll be honest, and I think some of our procedures have changed. So you can't pre-book an air, you can't pre-sort of reserve a space. Um, we don't even really know where we're going a lot of the time because we sort of pick a rough destination and then we get sidetracked or we stop for lunch and we're like, oh, this is pretty, we'll stay around here somewhere. So we kind of make up stuff as we go along. And what we do is we drive however long we want to drive that day in a rough destination. We all have sort of a rough plan. And then I try around sort of three o'clock to think, okay, how much longer do you want to drive? How much further do we want to go? And then I'll pull up the apps. So we get internet and data as we travel. We pay for that. We have a dongle. If you want to know how we do that, there's a post I just put up on the blog about what we use and how it works when we're traveling overseas. So we have that, so I can use it. I do it on my iPad. Occasionally I do it on my laptop, but I find the iPad is faster. And I get the Park for Night app up. Jesus, say that again. I get the Park for Night app up. And I use Park for Night more than Search for Sites in Europe. I think Search for Sites is great for the UK, but it doesn't have as many for Europe. The other app that we do use occasionally is Camper Contact. And we really like that because you can say how long your vehicle is and it will find you spaces for the length of your vehicle. But the problem with the app is you have to pay for it. Whereas if you go on the website, it's free. So I tend to only use the website for Camper Contact when I've got my laptop up. But mainly we find stuff through Park for Night. And it's literally, you can download the app. You can also go on the website, which off the top of my head is park, then the number four night.com. I'll leave you a link below. And we find where we are and it says within a radius, I think it's 20 miles, it comes up as, and then a load of symbols will appear on your um, little screen. And you will have campsites, you will have paid motorhome parking places, you will have free motorhome parking places, you'll have places where there is spaces for motorhome for park but only during the day. Um, you will have, I think there was another one, I think there's five different types. Um, oh yeah, you get waste disposal points. So on a lot of service stations or garages or things, there will be um, disposal points for gray waste water, sometimes even toilet waste. And occasionally you can get uh, refillable drinking water there too. So those will all come up on your little map. And then it's just a matter, oh, and wild camping, which is like a tree. And that will show you, there must be six, um, that will show you all the different wild camping places where people have found where you can fit a motorhome or a camper van. And then comes the fun of sifting through them. So I tend to look at our route and I just literally pick a couple um, and I'll click on them. And the first thing I look for is photographs. Now we tend to prefer the big wide gravel spaces. I'll try and put some photos in here so that you can see what I mean. But basically just a big gravel car park that haven't got the marked out bays because we have a trailer with us. We like to be able to park with the trailer still attached to us if we can. In a marked bay, they're generally shorter, so we have to take the trailer off, it's a bit more of a faff. Having said that, if we wanna stay somewhere for a few days, we will try and find somewhere that's got spaces 
with um, the time limit to stay for a couple of days. So that kind of changes what I'm looking for when I'm first looking. But if we're just staying for an overnight, I tend to look for a big open space that you can just pull in. Um, we don't tend to worry too much about electric because we charge most stuff as we drive. We've got the inverters going, um, which charges our laptops, all the phones are on charge as we drive. So if we've done sort of three or four hours, everything's pretty much charged. The batteries have had a good run, so we should be fine for an overnight, not a problem at all. Um, if we've been wild camping for a few nights and we want to charge it, then I'll try and find somewhere that's got, you know, electric sockets. So I look at the photos first and I'll kind of get a bit of a gut feeling about whether it's all right or not. And then I read the reviews. If I click on something and it doesn't have either photos or reviews, I tend to move on. Occasionally the photo, there are photos and no reviews. I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. It's really pretty. And we might sort of swing past it. But normally I don't even bother putting that as a course if I can't see what other people have said or see what it looks like. And then it literally is just a matter of picking something that looks nice. You won't get it right every time. We've done load where, you know, it looks lovely from the photos and the views are really good and we get there and we're like, there's no way we can fit in that, we're too long. Or it's full, or there's been a couple of occasions where we pick somewhere and it's been sort of demolished and they're building a block of flaps or something on it and nothing's been updated on the app. So we try and update things as we find them if they're wrong or if something's been shut for whatever reason or the council have changed their mind about offering the service. Yeah. Things happen and you won't pick it right every time. The other thing to bear in mind is use your gut feel. If you have lots of views about boys races at night or, um, I don't know, noise from local people or, uh, yeah, I, I can't even think of other examples off the top of my head. But use your gut feeling. If it feels like it's not something that's going to be right for you, then don't say that. There are so many options in France for airs or wild camping spots that you don't have to just say, right, well, I'm going to that one and that's it, that's my choice. So be flexible and don't leave it till the very last minute to pull in because it could be another sort of 20 miles down the road until you find another one that works for you. And the later you leave it, the longer it's gonna be until you can stop. We try and make sure we're done for sort of dinner time. We try not to drive in the dark afterwards because it's just harder when you don't know the area and you've got little roads and a big motorhome. So we try and make sure we're parked up by uh, nightfall, sunset. It sounded weird saying nightfall, but you know what I mean? <laughs> by the time it gets dark, <laughs> that's our plan. Um, if there are certain places that you really want to go, like you want to go near a city and there's a particular air or spot that is recommended, the best time to go, and this sounds totally counterintuitive, is late morning because everyone had left and moving on and new people haven't arrived yet. So if there's somewhere that's really popular or gets filled up really quickly and the reviews will often say that, maybe park somewhere like an hour away the night before and then go there later that morning. And people tend to be really good, even if they don't speak English. We've had several occasions, in, in fact, in Italy this was, where it was completely full when we turned up. And yet a couple of people sort of waved us down and they were like, we're going in half an hour. So we just pulled over and waited for them. And it was really nice of them. And we tried to do the same if we see anyone waiting and we know we're going in a bit. It just sort of builds a nice community feel. Um, what else can I tell you about airs? So we've covered how long you can stay, how much they cost can be anything from free, a couple of euros. It normally costs a couple of euros to use the facilities. So off the top of my head, it's normally sort of one to two euros to empty your toilet. And you have like a big Dalek machine, I'm gonna say, just like a big square box or round box. And you put your money in on the appropriate slot and then something will open and you can empty your toilet. The waste water is generally a grill in the ground and you can generally use those for free pretty much anywhere. So you can just pull up and empty your waste water. You don't have to use the air, you don't have to pay for the facilities. Fresh water is generally done on either a time, so you pay one or two euros for 10 minutes, and or you pay for so many litres. So again, it'll be one or two euros for 50 or 100 litres of fresh water. Not all of the airs say whether it is drinkable water or not. If it's drinkable, it will say eau de potable, P-O-T-A-B-L-E, um, potable water, basically. And that is drinking water. If it doesn't say that, you've got two options. You can put it in your fresh water tank and then put an awful lot of um, those tablets. Um, and you can put some of those down to make the water safe to drink. Or 
use it and this is what we tend to do is we tend to buy bottled water or refill our bottles of water as we're traveling if we can find the drinking water um, and if it doesn't say potable water on it we don't tend to use it for drinking just in case especially when you get down to the warmer climates and apparently a lot more bugs live in the warmer climate water systems if it's not been properly treated and filtered I am not a chemist, I don't know this stuff. That's just what I've been told, so that's what we try and do to avoid getting a bad stomach. Um, what else can I tell you? Okay, if you don't have internet in your motorhome or you only have Wi-Fi, so you need to be somewhere to connect to a Wi-Fi system, there are several options open to you. One is you can download um, a list or a map of the airs in France which we've never used. We've seen people who have used it and it downloads them all to your laptop and you can literally just track your map and pick ones that are nearby. A better option is to get something called All The Airs. It's a guidebook and again, I'll leave a link below for you and that's updated every year or every two years. And it lists all the airs. I think it lists most of the campsites. It won't have any wild camping spots in it, but it does have the local council approved airs around front. And I think the last couple of years it's been split into two. So you've got Northern France and Southern France. So if you're only doing the North bit, that's probably easier. And or you just buy both if you want to do all of France. And that has got really good lists. It's, um, it's really easy to understand. You just flick through to wherever you are and then there's a list of things. There's generally photos. There won't be reviews in the same way because obviously it's been submitted by the local council so everything sounds amazing. So if you can get online to look at the reviews um, then that's probably a good thing but otherwise just trust the book and use the book and that saves you having to worry about if you haven't got internet because we have been in a situation several times where we haven't had an internet signal and we keep saying that we should probably buy the book. We haven't yet but we have used it when other people have had it. <laughs> so we do really need to get our own. Um, and that's pretty much how you use the airs in France. They're very straightforward to use. They're great. You can have all sorts of conversations with people from all over Europe who use these things. And don't forget that motorhoming and camper vanning in Europe is it's a big thing. It's like a national pastime, I suppose, for the French. They love it. And many, many other countries across Europe are the same. It's not like the UK where it's impossible to stay anywhere other than a campsite without feeling like you're sort of in the wrong these are perfectly legal and perfectly okay places to stop for a night or if they allow it for two or three nights so you can explore the area the councils do it to get you to come to their town or village or city to explore the area and spend your money in that area so it, it kind of works both ways and they're really lovely sites they're generally kept really clean um not all of them have toilets in fact i would go as far as to say most of them don't um, I know that some do, I know that some do, and some of them are actually really nice toilets and the toilet blocks are kept really clean, some of them aren't at all, and they are fairly filthy. But if you don't have toilet facilities on board, then you can definitely find some where there are toilet facilities. So there's still an option. Um, ideally, in an ideal world, be self-contained, expect to be self-contained, so expect to provide your own power and your own shower, <laughs> rhymes, um, and your own toilet and you will have an easier time of it. You'll have much more choice anyway, especially if you want to go places like up the mountains. They don't tend to have toilets. Um, so yeah, it depends where you want to go, of course. I think that's it. I can't think of anything else about airs. Let me just check. I have just put a blog post out all about this. So let me check what there is. I think we've covered it. The only other question that I've been asked is how safe are they? It's, are they as safe as a campsite which has got a proper locked barrier and generally between you and anybody who wants to come in and a campsite generally have cameras and things? No, they're probably not as safe as somewhere that has got proper security. It's the difference between staying on a campsite in the UK and staying in a car park. We haven't had a problem ever. We tend to always use our gut and if we didn't like the feel of somewhere, we move on. The couple of times we haven't done that, and that applies to the UK as well as in Europe, we have had some issues with noise or with local idiots causing chaos in the middle of the night. Um, and that that is something that you could get on an air. Um, you tend not to. You also tend not to get 
local kids causing chaos because you are not an abnormality. They're used to motorhomers turning up every day, um, especially in the busier cities and things where you would think that there would be a lot more trouble. It They're used to it. So no, of course, nothing is 100% safe. Even a campsite is not 100% safe. If you're really concerned, then I would say probably a campsite is a better option for you. But if you're sensible and you keep everything locked, keep your windows locked at night, use your hatches open, but put them on a lock if you can. Um, if you have got a trailer, make sure that it's chained up properly. We carry a tyre, oh my goodness, my brain's not working. What's it called? The tyre thing, clamp. We, we carry a clamp for our trailer that we lock over night time so that people can't move the trailer. And to be fair, you can't get our trailer off without the whole van shaking anyway silly little things like that that make us sleep better and we do sleep great on airs um and if we are like i said if we're ever at a point where we're not sleeping great we're like well why why are our guts saying that we're not happy and we tend to move on in those situations but don't let that put you off everything is scary the first time it's the same as wild camping airs are like legal wild camping in a lot of ways so it's exactly the same feeling of I feel a bit isolated and I'm not really sure what's going on. I mean, it's unlikely on an air that you'll be completely on your own. Uh, we have been in the middle of the winter, but in the summer, you probably won't be on your own in many of them. And if you are, the locals appreciate the fact that you're there. They like the fact that you've come to look at you know, their village or their town, especially if you speak a little bit of French, they'll really work to be polite with you and sort of, interact with you and welcome you into their place so it's in their best interest not to have a lot of crime and vandalism and horrible things happening in their airs so yeah use a little bit of common sense but don't be overly scared by it i know there are some horror stories going around and yes i'm not saying that nothing ever happens but the percentage of things happening is like you know going to london you know, horrible things happen to people in london but the majority of people who visit have a great time so yeah yeah I, there is no definitive answer that i'm not going to tell you it's 100 percent safe because it's probably not 100 percent safe but i'm also going to say don't be put off by that and that was a really rambling answer to a question apologies but i think that's everything i need to tell you about is if you have got any other questions drop them below or ideally drop them on the blog post i'll leave the link to that below um and i can answer that then that way everyone else who goes to the blog post can benefit from your question and my answer i don't know what time we're leaving here we're off today we're going off towards niagara falls and then we're going to toronto for canada day which is really cool canada day is on the 1st of july so i'm hoping i will get this edited and uploaded before then but if i don't it might be after canada day <laughs> and i'll put some pretty pictures on i have no idea when i'm going to get this one up but i hope that answers most of your questions about airs in france and taking a motorhome or camper van to france and I hope you have an amazing adventure. Feel free to tag me on Facebook and let me know where you end up and what adventures you have. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.